the process of exchanging ideas, opinion, expertise and facts in order to achieve the greatest possible outcome is what we call as effective communication. In a nutshell, it is the sender's representation of his or her point of view in a manner that the recipient can understand. Effective communication can help an organization succeed in a variety of ways. On the other hand, a poorly aligned plan, failure to execute the strategy, use of an appropriate communication medium, bad timing, and even details like word choice or tone of your voice can all lead to ineffective communication. Management and communication are strongly interwoven in business and it is vital for a manager to understand and apply the foundation of communication in their management and leadership. Effective message delivery is both an art and skill that can only be honed through constant practice and experience. Through this course, we will understand the role of effective communication in the business world. We will also learn about project communication management and the different process involved in it. So without any further ado, let's get started right away. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, I want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so that you don't miss out on any new updates or video releases from Great Learning. If you enjoy this video, show us some love and like this video. Knowledge increases by sharing. So make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues. Make sure to comment on the video for any queries or suggestions and I'll respond to your comments. Hello, my name is Shantanu Rana and today I am going to teach you this course on communication management by Great Learning. Welcome all of you. We are going to discuss each and everything related to communication and why managing communication at an individual level, at an organization level is extremely important. That is something we are going to explore in this particular course. Before we actually begin with this course, I want all of you to pause the screen for a while and think about communication. What exactly is the impact of communication in your life? Have you ever been in a situation where you could not communicate something effectively because of which a lot of things were ruined? Or have you been a part of something where you could communicate something really well, something effectively that things were actually sold? With the help of good communication, effective communication, you can resolve a number of conflicts. And if it is managed properly, organization can also achieve so many things at so many different levels. In this particular course, we are going to discuss and explore each of these topics that I had just told you. So let's not waste any time and directly move to the agenda where I'll be telling you what exactly we are going to cover in this course one by one. So as you can see on the screen, the first thing that we will be discussing in this course is what is communication. We all know what is communication. It's simply passing the information from one person to another or from one place to another. But we will be looking at the more formal definition of communication and different aspects of communication in the first module. Then the impact of effective communication. What exactly is the impact of effective and efficient communication, especially at an organizational level? Then communication and management. When we are combining these two terms, we should know what exactly is communication, what exactly is management and what is the relationship between two, these two things. Then communication methods, what is communication management, importance of communication management, why are we even uh, reading about it, why is it so important. Then the five W's of communication management, then communication management do's and don'ts. What are some simple tips and tricks that you should always keep in your mind whenever we are talking about communication. Then what is project communication management. Whenever you are talking about a particular project or project management in general, there, what is the role of communication and how exactly you can manage communication at a project level. That is something we will be exploring at the end of this course. And finally, we will be touching upon project communication management processes. What are the different processes? How to deal with that? Each of these things we are going to cover in this course one by one. All right. So let's just start with the definition of communication. What exactly is communication? As you can see on the screen, the act of sending information from one place, person or organization to another is known as communication. Right now I am talking to all of you. So I am the sender of the information. 
you are the recipient of the information and whatever I am saying, whatever you can see on the screen, that is nothing but the message. So there is one sender required, one recipient required and there is one message required in order to make sure that our communication is happening which is nothing but the second point that every communication involves three main parts at least one sender a message and a recipient sometimes the recipient can be an audience as well if you talk about any public speaking event where there's one sender or more than one senders and there are a large number of recipients but the message has to be clear that is the main goal of any effective communication communication is a very complex topic as the transmission of the message from sender to the recipient can be influenced by a wide range of factors. It depends upon your mood, it depends upon my mood, it depends upon the environment around us, the surrounding, it depends upon a large number of factors that whatever I am saying is received in what form. Sometimes I'll say something in a certain way, but the recipient will not receive it in the same way. There can always be some mismatch, some gap between what I'm saying and what the other person is understanding. Since there is always a gap and a mismatch, it is a very, very complex topic. Communication in general is not a very easy topic because it is influenced by a large number of internal and external factors. Then effective communication necessitates the selection of a suitable communication medium or you can say communication channel each communication medium has its own set of advantages and disadvantages. We can take the example of this situation right now. I am giving you this information. You are the recipient. I am the sender. This is all happening online through internet. But if we could have been in a classroom, things would have been different. There will always be some advantages, some disadvantages of each of these processes. Similarly, depending upon the medium of the communication or you can say the channel of the communication, there will always be some advantages and some disadvantages. Depending upon the medium, you can always communicate effectively. So while you have to communicate something to some other party, to some other person, always make sure that you choose your medium very precisely thinking about the situation. The different categories of communication include spoken or verbal communication, the non-verbal communication, which is nothing but your body language, then written communications, for example, your email or any letters, then visualizations, whatever you see. For example, there's a very uh, simple uh, uh, image that you can see at the end of the screen that there's a sender. He sends the message to the recipient. Now, how can you say whether a communication is effective or ineffective? Whatever the sender is trying to say, whatever the sender is trying to imply, if that is received by the recipient in the correct form, in the same form, then we'll say that the communication was effective. But if there is a big mismatch between what the sender is saying and what the recipient is receiving, in that case, we'll say that the communication was incomplete or the communication was ineffective. So in order to make sure that you communicate effectively, you have to choose the medium properly and you have to make sure that whatever you are saying is going through a particular channel. There should be a proper channel that you are choosing. Sometimes email will be the best way to say something. Sometimes a call will be the best way to say something. Sometimes an in-person meeting will be the best way to say something. So you have to choose the channel properly and then you have to communicate in order to make sure that whatever you are saying is clear and precise. Now let's discuss the seven C's of effective communication. What are these seven C's? You can look at these seven words which starts from C which are extremely important whenever we talk about effective communication. Number one, clear. Whatever you are saying should be clear. There should not be any room for doubt. The other person should understand exactly what you are saying. In that case, we'll say that the communication is effective, then correct. Whatever you're saying should be correct. There should not be anything wrong in that. For example, if you are writing a mail and there are a lot of grammatical errors, there are a lot of punctuation errors, definitely the meaning of what you are trying to say will not be same when it will be received by the recipient. So in order to make sure that there is no gap between what you are saying and what is received at the end of the recipient, you have to be correct and you have to be clear. Then complete. Whatever you are saying should be complete. 
half information is never good so in order to make sure that the message is received in the correct form by the recipient make sure whatever you are saying you don't have to write long paragraphs you don't have to say so many things you can say one sentence which will make a lot of sense precision is very very important whatever you say or whatever you write or whatever you are showing in any form of communication should be precise should be concise then concrete whatever you are saying should be solid it should make sense it should impact the other person if you are saying something which is not going to impact the other person or things uh, revolved around that person then definitely he is not going to pay attention to whatever you are saying you always have to define that what exactly is the cause of whatever you are saying defining that cause makes whatever you are saying very very concrete and makes it more effective then coherent whatever you are saying should be coherent should be easy to understand for the other person you should always analyze the audience if you are writing a mail to person a and then you are writing a mail to person b for the same thing both the mails should be different depending upon your audience depending upon that person person a will be different person b will be different so you have to communicate with both of them differently it should be easy to understand for both of them then courteous whatever you are saying should be courteous a little courtesy will never harm anyone especially when we are talking at an organizational level it is very good to be courteous with your words in order to make sure that you reach wherever you want to reach because whatever you are saying should be very very clear to the other party only then we will be make sure that we reach to the desired position that we have in our mind now let's discuss two simple types of communication which is very clear by its name itself internal communication and external communication when we say internal communication it is uh, the type of communication which is internal to the organization for example if there is any communication between the managers between the managers and employees or between the employees all of that is nothing but part of your internal communication as you can see on the screen as well that it is the exchange of information between individuals or departments of the same company of the same organization it flows within the organization and the participants are generally employees and managers the external communication as the name suggests it is external to the communication of uh, the organization it is going outside or flowing outside the organization external communication occurs when members or departments of an organization connect with an outside party maybe some other organization maybe some other platform that they want to interact with it flows in the vast business environment and the participants are customers shareholders suppliers investors etc whatever communication you are having with the customers that will also be an example of external communication because that is flowing outside the organization whatever you are doing inside the organization will be part of your internal communication so these are certain things that you should definitely keep in your mind whenever you are talking about communication in very simple words we can say that in order to make a communication effective the message has to be clear precise correct you have to understand the audience the person the other party then only you will be able to choose a particular medium for that communication to happen and it will make sure that whatever you are saying as a sender will be received by the recipient in the correct form which is the main aim of any effective communication then we saw that there are two types internal and external communication internal communication happens within the organization and when we talk about external communication that flows outside the organization with shareholders customers or maybe investors all right so now let's talk about the impact of effective communication what exactly is the impact of effective communication at an organizational level especially that is something we will be exploring in this particular module so as you can see on the screen that effective communication can help an organization can help a company succeed in a variety of ways we will be looking at all those benefits of effective communication but on the other hand poorly aligned plan failure to execute the strategy use of inappropriate communication medium or you can say communication channel bad timing and even details like word choice or tone of the voice can all lead to ineffective or inefficient communication so in order to make sure that your communication is effective whatever you are saying is received in the correct form by the recipient you have to make sure that you plan properly 
you strategize properly then you implement the same properly you choose a particular proper medium particular channel the timing should be good and you also have to make sure that your word choice and tone of voice is good to go then only you will be able to make sure that whatever you are saying is received in the correct form whether it's in written form whether it's in verbal form or whether it is in visualization form but the message has to be clear to the other party that is the main aim of effective communication so let's have a look at the benefits of effective communication number one effective communication builds employee morale if there is no gap between what you are saying and what the employees have to do definitely you will be able to boost their morale they will be more confident and motivated to work it improves employee engagement and derives their loyalty if what you are saying is very very clear to them they will be able to understand their job properly they will know what exactly are their roles and responsibilities and they will achieve that since there is no gap between the leadership or management team and the employees the things will be very very smooth very very efficient you will be able to save money energy and time at so many different places during a project during basic things because the things are clear and that definitely will make sure that employees are invested in what they are doing but if there is a gap if there is a no clarity between what you are saying and what the employees are understanding their morale will never be boosted and they will never be engaged will never be invested in the job so in order to make sure that the employees are fully invested in the job you have to be clear with your words whatever you are saying should be received by the employees in the correct form and then they will be loyal to the company as well it reduces the likelihood of misunderstandings and conflicts whenever you talk about any organizations conflict is a part of the organization there will always be so many conflicts we all are different people we all have different ideologies we all have different principles in life and when we come onto the same table there will always be some kind of disputes when we are talking creatively so in order to make sure that those conflicts are resolved properly communication is again very important tool if you can communicate things well then there are very less chances that there will be any bad or negative impact of those conflicts or disputes then effective communication improves processes and procedures resulting in efficiencies and cost savings it provides a clear vision to the teams and individuals if what you are saying is making clear everything to the team they are getting to know what exactly are their roles and responsibilities what they are supposed to do what they are not supposed to do then they will also do it uh, by being more engaged in whatever they are doing and that will also give them a clarity so whatever we have a vision for the organization whenever you talk about any organization there is always some core value some vision some mission in order to reach to that core value in order to reach to that vision the organizational goal each and every one will have to be on the same page and in order to be on the same page effective communication is extremely important so these are all nothing but the benefits of effective communication all right since this entire course is about communication management but before we actually start with what exactly is communication management and how to manage communication at a project level or maybe at an organizational level it is important for all of us to understand that what exactly is the relationship between communication and management communication is a different term management is a different term how these two terms are interconnected that is something we will be exploring in this particular module so as you can see on the screen management is a discipline comprised of five general functions we all know that whenever we talk about management it is nothing but a uh, it consists of five main functions that is planning organizing staffing leading and controlling now if you look at each of these functions you will realize that communication or i should say effective communication is very very important in each of these functions you want to plan something you need effective communication because you are you'll not be the only one who's going to plan there will be so many people involved so many individuals so many teams will be involved in planning something so in order to make sure that you plan something properly you strategize it properly you have to have effective communication then organizing will also require effective communication staffing you want to hire somebody you want to fire somebody you want to take their interviews effective communication is extremely important leading 
it is all about influencing motivating people how will you motivate people without effective communication so there also effective communication is extremely important controlling that you can also say directing you want to tell somebody their roles and responsibilities you want to make processes efficient by saying something there also you will have to be very good with whatever you are saying clarity of thoughts and clarity of words is very very important in each of these functions so we can easily say that since management is all about planning organizing staffing leading and controlling communication is definitely linked to management because each of these functions will require very good or we can say effective communication that's how management and effective communications go hand in hand management and communication in organizations are closely linked together it is critical for a manager to grasp and implement the fundamentals of communication in his or her management and leadership if you want to lead people you will have to be very good with your thoughts and very good with your words that is what effective communication is all about whatever you are saying should be very very clear to your team or maybe to the people that you are managing directly or indirectly so the role of communication in management communication is a linking process of management and people obtain and exchange information through communication whatever you want to say you want to talk to your manager you want to take a sick leave you want to take any another leave you want to uh, discuss something you want to resign from the organization each and everything is based upon communication so if the communication is effective definitely it is going to help you personally as well as professionally communication is one of the most time consuming activities for any manager if you talk about any manager in any field you talk about pharmaceutical sector you talk about educational technology sector you talk about any company in this world mostly the managers are involved in communication if the communication is good definitely each and everything will be controlled will be planned properly so mostly the managers are uh, consuming their time in communicating things so definitely communication becomes a very very important aspect when we talk at an organizational level the last point is communication signifies power in organizations definitely it is a symbol of power if you can communicate something really well definitely you have a very good tool with you that you can use in order to lead people in order to motivate people in order to make sure that the employees will be invested in whatever they are doing so we can simply say that management is a, a very very important thing whenever we talk at an organizational level planning organizing staffing leading controlling all of these are nothing but functions of management and all of these functions are dependent upon effective communication so we can simply say that communication and management are two very very important things which go hand in hand in any organization at any level you're talking about any project you're talking about any long term or short term project or maybe at an organization level in general effective communication is extremely important in in order to manage things in order to make sure that all the processes are efficient effective and smooth all right so now let's talk about communication methods what are the different types of communications that we have so as you can see on the screen there are four main types of communication in management formal written formal verbal informal written and informal verbal it is very simple to understand just by the name for example if we talk about formal written the example of this can be an email whenever you are sending a mail to somebody that has to be formal and that's nothing but written communication so that will be your formal written if we talk about formal verbal this right now whatever i'm telling you whatever information i'm passing to you you being a recipient and i am being the sender this is nothing but the example of formal verbal where the type of communication is verbal communication and it is a formal setting similarly whenever you are giving any presentation you are talking to your colleagues maybe you are talking to the leadership team that can be an example of formal verbal then in formal written maybe you are chatting on social media with somebody that will be an example of informal written because that is informal and that's a type of written communication and then last but not the least is informal verbal that is in an informal setting when you are saying something for example any conversation that you are having with maybe your friends colleagues or maybe with your uh, other friends in general in uh, outside the work also that is nothing but your example of informal verbal so there is a very simple note that formal communication is more dependable since it adheres to a set structure established by the company but informal communication on the other hand takes off on its own 
and follows its own path. If you are talking at an organizational level, if you have to say something, there will always be a structure. Each and every organization will have certain values, some structure that how they want to communicate. For example, if you are a part of XYZ private limited company, there will always be something that how you are supposed to uh, manage communication, how you are supposed to talk to your colleagues, how you are supposed to talk to your managers, how you are supposed to talk to the leadership team, what kind of emails you are supposed to send. There are generally training and development programs in the organizations as well in order to have or manage this uh, communication properly. So these are the four main types of communication. All right. So now it is time for us to discuss what exactly is communication management. We have understood each and everything about communication, the types of communication, the management part, how management and communication are interlinked. Now after discussing each and everything, this is time for me to give you the formal definition of communication management. So as you can see on the screen, the systematic planning, implementation, monitoring and revision of all the channels, all the mediums and content of communication within an organization and between organizations is known as communications management. It may look very complex, but it is very, very simple to understand. By communication management, we simply mean managing the communication. And when we say manage, manage means planning, implementing, executing, monitoring, revising, controlling. So all these aspects of communication gives rise to communication management. So we can simply say that communication management is all about planning, implementing, monitoring and revising communication channels. And what exactly is the content of communication? That is also very, very important. It can be within the organization or it can be outside the organization as well. I have already told you there are two types of communication, internal communication or external communication. When we talk about communication management, both the communications are involved in that internal as well as external. So you can simply say, for example, within an organization, you want to plan. First of all, you will plan that how exactly somebody will send a mail, how exactly somebody will interact with the leadership team, with the managers, what exactly will be the processes. That is nothing but your planning and strategizing part. Then comes implementing or executing that. You have planned, you have documented everything, but communicating the same to the employees, communicating the same to everyone involved in that process and then making sure that that is implemented, that is executed. That is the second part. Then finally taking feedback from those people and making revisions in those documented plans. That will be the third main step. So that's how this entire process works. First of all, you plan the communication, then you execute or implement the communication, then you monitor, take feedback and revise the plan. So you go to the first step again. It's a very iterative process, always ongoing process. You keep on changing the communication uh, plans based upon the situation. If you talk about current situation, there is COVID going on. And because of COVID-19, we have to uh, change the channels. We have to change the way we used to communicate. Everything has become online. So definitely it is always going to change and we have to implement that change. We have to be adaptable, but at the same time, we have to manage communication in order to make sure that each and everyone within the organization is on same page. All right. So now that you have understood what exactly is communication management, it is time for us to discuss the importance of communication management. So as you can see on the screen, the first point is better decision making and planning. Definitely, if you will manage communication, the decision making is going to improve. Each and everyone will be on the same page and you will be very clear with whatever you want to say because you have a proper plan in place and you are just going to implement that. Then effective communication management plan will uh, definitely increase the efficiency and effectiveness of the organization. It will facilitate coordination and collaboration between people. Nobody will be hesitant to reach out to people because they have a proper plan. That is all communication management is all about. Then it increases managerial effectiveness and efficiency. It will be democratic management. What do I mean when I say democratic management? Participative management. Each and everyone will feel involved, seen and heard, which is the best way. Each and every employee will be invested in whatever they are doing. That's the beauty of communication management. Then job satisfaction or you can say employee engagement, then improves productivity because whatever the manager is saying will be clear to you. 
as we have a proper plan we are monitoring everything we are making revisions to the plan all the time so each and everything will be very very clear between the managers and the employees then that will definitely increase productivity it will reduce cost time and energy so we will save a lot and we will be able to improve productivity efficiency and the processes will be much smoother compared to the situation where we do not have a proper communication plan there's a, a very beautiful note as well that communication management is critical for success at an individual team and organizational levels definitely whatever we are discussing in this course that is more related to organizational level but that does not mean that it is restricted to the organizational level if you can manage your communications you will improve personally you will improve professionally there will be improvement as as an individual on an individual level on a team level and definitely on an uh, organizational level too so that's the beauty of having a communication plan and that's what communication management is all about managing the communication by planning by implementing by monitoring each and everything which is involved in passing the information from a sender to a recipient all right now let's discuss the 5 w's of communication management we have understood what exactly is communication management and what is the importance of communication management so what are certain things that you should definitely keep in your mind whenever we are talking about communication management there are 5 w questions that i am going to tell you that you should definitely ask yourself before you are communicating anything number 1 what information is critical to the success of the project what is that information which is critical that will make sure that you are precise and you are concise about whatever you are saying or whatever you are writing second is who needs information and what kind of information do they require that will help you in designing the content and in deciding what kind of audience you will be getting if you don't have an idea of the audience that who's going to write your uh, read your mail or who's going to listen to whatever you are saying then definitely you will never be able to design the content of whatever you are saying so in order to decide whatever you are going to say you should do a proper analysis of the audience that you will be able to do if you'll ask yourself this question that who needs information and what kind of information do they require if you'll ask yourself this question you will definitely try to find the answer to this question which will lead you to a proper audience analysis then what will be the time required for the flow of information that is something that you should also keep in your mind that what exactly will be the timeline what the managers are going to tell the employees what the employees are going to tell the shareholders what are the timelines for each of these things you should have a check on all these things as well then what should be the type or format of the information whether you are going to communicate through emails whether there will be a specific tool that you are going to use are you going to use any specific software technologies or maybe you are going to uh, communicate things verbally informally how are you going to communicate do you have a proper plan in mind for that that is also something that you should definitely ask yourself then who will be responsible for transmitting the information that is the last thing that you should ask yourself that who is the responsible person for that is it the responsibility of the project manager is it the responsibility of any other senior manager who will be held responsible will be accountable for all this flow of information within that project or within that organization all these things you should definitely ask yourself and you should try to find an answer to these things if you are planning communication if you are trying to manage communication that will make sure that you have a proper plan in place which will be uh, very good for each and everyone not just for the leadership team or the management team it will be good for the employees as well as for the management team as well as for the project success and that is the main goal that whatever you are doing whatever uh, communication plan you are trying to develop that should take care of each and every one each and every shareholder who's involved in that so that's how it works all right so let's discuss communication management do's and don'ts what are certain things that you should definitely do whenever we talking about communication management and what are certain things that you should prevent or try to avoid in order to communicate effectively so do's are have a communication strategy in place you should definitely have a plan how are you going to communicate what will be the channel like what will be the communication medium who's going to require the information what type of information is required all those w questions that we have discussed should be there in your mind a proper strategy should uh, should be there in your mind then second is establish communication expectations 
what are you expecting from the other party what are you expecting from the recipient what is your expectation from this communication in general let's say in a project the expectation of the communication is eventually to make the project a success so that can be one expectation which should be very very clear to you then be direct and clear the direct you are the better will be the chances that the other person will actually understand what you are trying to say and that is always complete and effective communication then be a strong supporter of your project team if you are talking in terms of a project then definitely you should support your team and that will also be one important aspect of communication management what are some important don'ts what is something that you should definitely avoid number 1 don't engage in passive aggressive behavior don't be that kind of person who's unclear who's not saying something clearly you want to say something but you are saying it in a very indirect way that will leave a lot of room for doubt and the other party other person team may not be able to understand what exactly you are saying so it's always better to be direct to be clear correct and concise it's never good to uh, engage yourself in passive aggressive behavior then don't micromanage each and every process you should always believe in your team if you are handling a project you don't have to manage each and every step certain things you should definitely leave on team that will give them confidence and they will be motivated they will be invested in whatever they are doing then don't forget to listen one very important part of communication management is active listening if you can't listen you can never speak that's one simple uh, rule that you have to follow so if you have to listen to people then only you will be able to understand what are their concerns and based upon that you will be able to communicate effectively if you won't listen to people you will never have an idea that what exactly is the requirement of those people then whatever you will communicate will not make any difference so in order to be a good communicator you will have to be a good listener an active listener then don't rely solely on electronic communications you should always uh, you know have some verbal communication in person meetings along with the electronic communications so these are some important do's and don'ts for communication management all right so now that we have uh, discussed each and everything about communication and management we know what is communication management the importance of it do's and don'ts now it is time for us to understand what exactly is the meaning of communication management when we talk about a particular project that will give rise to the definition of project communication management so as you can see on the screen project communication management is a set of processes or you can say procedures for ensuring that the right information reaches the right stakeholder in the right format at the right time what does that mean if one of these things is not met definitely there will be a lot of disturbance and everyone will not be on the same page and overall the processes will not be very very smooth effective or efficient so in order to make sure that each and everyone is on the same page and there is good coordination between the project team project management team we have to make sure that there is right information the content is right it reaches the right stakeholder in the right time in the right format so that all these four things are extremely important just assume that the information is right the timing is right but it reaches the wrong stakeholder there is no point of that similarly if the information is right it reaches the right stakeholder but the format is not right or the timing is not right then also it will disturb each and everything so as a part of proper communication management in a project we have to make sure that right information reaches the right stakeholder in the right format at the right time all these four things should exist simultaneously then only we will be able to make sure that the communication in general is effective and each and every one is coordinated then second point is effective communication management in projects results in greater collaboration or we can say coordination between all stakeholders which is a crucial or critical determinant of project success how do you say a project is a success it is simply the coordination between the stakeholders and the team and if that coordination is good definitely the project will be a success there will be more chances of project being a success so in order to make sure that this happens and this is true we have to have effective communication plan then it is impossible to keep all relevant stakeholders informed about the project's changing state without a comprehensive project communication plan 
in today's world there are so many changes and especially when each and everything is based on technology there are so rapid changes which are happening in the technology world in the technical world so in order to make sure that we are adaptable and we are flexible we should definitely have a proper comprehensive project com uh, communication plan then it's simple to maintain transparency across all aspects of project management with effective communication management in place resulting in the best decisions being taken which translates to efficient or effective project delivery we can simply say that the communication is effective will give rise to better decision making if decision making is better it will give rise to efficient project delivery and we will be able to make sure that the project will be a success project communication is primarily the responsibility of the project manager so it is the duty of the project manager to have a proper plan in place and then implement it monitor it and then revise the plan based upon the feedback of the team so that's all project communication management is all about all right so now that we have understood what exactly is project communication management it is time for us to discuss different processes which are there in project communication management so in this particular module we are going to discuss three primary project communication management processes number 1 planning communication which is also known as communication plan then managing communication and finally monitoring or controlling communication so these are the three main processes when we talk about planning communication that is more about finding the answers to the wh questions that is what will happen how are we going to do it what will be the channel who's going to receive the information all these wh questions are part of your planning communication then in managing it's about creating it's about the content of the communication and distribution of the communication then finally monitoring communication that is making the revision in the plans based upon the feedbacks based upon the control that we are having at the communication so these are the three main processes we are going to look at each of these processes in much more detail so as you can see the first process is planning communication so understanding the information requirement of each stakeholder who is involved in the project so first of all you will understand the requirement and based upon that you will develop a plan you will strategize so understanding the communication preferences such as languages that the stakeholders are comfortable in medium channel any technology which is required that the stakeholder will be comfortable in all these things you should keep in mind that should be a part of your plan then developing a strategy for information exchange using different communication methods or different communication channels whether you want the communication to be written to be verbal you want in person meetings how exactly do you want it finding answer to these questions will also be part of planning communication then understanding the cultural and social background of the stakeholders for example let's say you are writing a mail you are writing a mail you are from india and you are writing a mail to the client to the stakeholders from us their culture is completely different something that you can say in india will be totally normal but if you say it to a person from us it can be something which is not as normal as it is in india it can mean something else in that particular culture so you have to keep in mind all these things and then only you should strategize and based upon that you'll choose a channel and you'll actually communicate so you should find answers to all these questions that what exactly is the requirement of this stakeholder what exactly is the cultural uh, requirement of the stakeholder what exactly is the language medium or technology which is required by the stakeholder all these things you should keep in mind that should be a part of your planning communication then uh, defining a communication management tool there are so many softwares technologies available so if any of that is required that should also be discussed in the plan communication process now next to any is managing communication or manage communication so following the communication management plan sticking to that that is the part of managing communication then collection and analysis of data it is more about uh, finding the content for the communication so creation of messages that will also be part of manage communication then distribution of project communications where you have to distribute it then storage of required information for future reference if there is a document that you feel you should store it will be required for you for future reference as well storing that then storage distribution creation content creation for the communication all of that is part of manage communication then final process is monitoring or controlling communication so monitoring and controlling project communications 
throughout the life cycle of the project it is not like once the communication will happen then you will monitor or then you will revise it happens throughout the life cycle of the project from step one till the end where you actually uh, send the uh, information or send the whatever is required to the recipient from the very beginning till the very end monitoring and controlling is extremely important in project communications uh, it ensures that the messages are sent and received uh, using the intended channels and if they are understood or not so that is something which is ensured by monitor communication process and reviewing and updating the plan on regular basis as per the stakeholder needs is also part of monitor communication so you take feedback from the team from the stakeholders to what extent the message is understood by the uh, stakeholders or it is understood or not understood based upon all those things you uh, make changes in the plan and once you make changes in the plan then again you manage that communication and you keep on monitoring it so it's a ongoing iterative process so that's all uh, project communication management processes are all about there are three main processes planning communication managing communication and finally monitoring and controlling communications all right so i'm really glad that you have reached to the summary slide of this particular course that means you have attended all the other uh, modules and you are completely aware about what exactly is communication what is communication management what are project communications and how do you manage all these processes so i'm really sure that you have understood all these things properly now it is time for us to summarize all the main things that we have discussed in this particular course so first of all we looked at the definition of communication where we understood that the act of sending information from one place person or organization to another is known as communication there is always one sender one recipient or more than one recipient and a message these are the three important things whenever you are communicating something so if whatever the sender is going to say is very very clear to the recipient that means the communication is complete and is effective but if the communication is very very unclear there is a mismatch between what the sender is saying and what the recipient is receiving that means the communication is ineffective so in order to make sure that the communication is effective you have to be very clear you have to be very crisp precise you have to be correct coherent those things you have to keep in your mind in order to make sure that whatever you are saying it is received by the recipient in the same form in the correct form then we looked at the definition of communication management where we understood that management is about planning organizing staffing leading and directing or controlling people and in each of these functions effective communication is extremely important and that's why we can simply say that communication and management are interlinked to each other the systematic planning implementation monitoring and revision of all channels and content of communication within an organization or it can be external as well that is between organizations is known as communication management then we understood that how this term communication management is taken whenever we are talking about a particular project so project communication management is a set of processes or procedures for ensuring that the right information reaches the right stakeholder at the right time in the right format each of these things should meet in order to make sure that the communication is effective if the information is right but it does not reach the right stakeholder there is no point of that and everything will be disturbed so we have to make sure that everything should be correct in the project the information the uh, reaching the right stakeholder then right format right time each of these things should exist simultaneously in order to make sure that whatever you are saying will be uh, simply taken in the correct form by the recipients or by the project teams and then we discuss that there are three primary project communication management processes that is number 1 planning communication number 2 managing communication and finally monitoring communication we have discussed that in planning communication we try to understand the requirement of the stakeholders what do they expect what is the language that they are comfortable in is there any particular technology that they are comfortable in what is the culture of the stakeholders like understanding all those things is a part of planning communication then implementing that plan implementing or executing that strategy is nothing but managing communication it also includes documenting everything which is required for future reference as a part of that communication plan then monitor communication 
you monitor and control the communications and revise the plan based upon the feedback of the team throughout the life cycle of the project so these are the three main processes that we have discussed as per communication management in a project is concerned thank you so much if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet i want to request you to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so that you don't miss out on any new updates or video releases from great learning if you enjoy this video show us some love and like this video knowledge increases by sharing so make sure you share this video with your friends and colleagues make sure to comment on the video for any queries or suggestions and i'll respond to your comments